Hi everyone. Good evening to all. Am I audible? Hello, Sam. Hi, Scott. Hello, bye. Hi, Rohit. Hello, hello. Hello. How are you, Sam? All I'm okay? Good. I'm good. Bye. How are you? I'm also great. I can see Sam, Kavita, Rohit, Scott. So, Saita. Hello, everyone. Very good evening to you all. So, let's start our today's session. So before we can start, uh, just wait for one or two minutes more. So if anyone is joining, so they can join. Some people might join late. So just wait for one or two minutes, then we'll start our session, okay? So just, we have to wait. So today basically, we'll do the live configuration that very basic things we are going to start. That is, let me say my screen. Uh, where it is, my PPT. Yeah. So today, basically, uh, we'll start with the uh, Palo Alto Firewall, very basic configuration. So every network or security engineer who is trying to build their career in security domain or networking domain they must know how to configure the firewall. I've seen people in industry, they keep struggling to understand basic things, which is how to take a console of firewall, what is meaning of the console, how to take GUI access of the firewall. So a lot of challenges I have seen and people are struggling while doing their day-to-day -day activity during office hour. So I'll try to help to no address those point so you guys will feel comfortable and you can easily understand how basically we can do at least basic level of configuration of any firewall i know we'll understand very advanced things in upcoming sessions but today we are going on basic if your basic is clear then probably you can go step by step any of the advanced level all right so let me see. Uh, yeah, I can see there is uh, people. Uh, so, all right. Just give me one more minute. Let me exit from here. All right. <clears throat> so I believe we can start. All people already joined the meeting and many of you are watching from YouTube as well. So no worry, we can enjoy it together. Whosoever wish to join the Zoom and they're having a live doubt, they want to discuss anything, they can join live session. If someone want to watch from YouTube and they want to ask any question, just feel free to ask. I'll keep checking the YouTube comment as well. So I'll try to address those query from YouTube, all right? So no worry. So let's start guys. Welcome to Greenet again and myself Pankaj. And last week we have done, uh, not last year, last week we have done discussion about uh, the course where we have done uh, like a lot of discussion why we need a Palo Alto firewall, what is difference between the Palo Alto and other firewall like Checkpoint, Cisco, Fortinet and why we need a firewall. So those who is just watching or like join the first time this session, so I would recommend the video is available on the YouTube. So you guys can go and watch why firewall is, you know, very important nowadays and why it is like uh, uh, playing a very vital role in network and security infrastructure. And without a firewall, like any company cannot be survived. So security is must. And I have given a lot of example in terms of the real time scenario. So if you guys want to understand about the firewall, so I would recommend go and watch that session. And additionally, we have done a lot of discussion about like uh, why basically Palo Alto firewall, we should learn. There is some uh, like good, uh, I have done the comparison between the different different criteria that is the rating, security performance, value for money, like how easy to implementation, how easy to manage the firewall, how the technical and tax support is available and what are the all cloud features. 
and where the Palo Alto stand. And additionally, I explained about the Gartner Magic Report, where I explained why Palo Alto is leading the market. Okay, so there is a lot of things. We have done a discussion in a previous session. Today, we'll discuss more about the basic things. All right. So we already know why we use the Palo Alto firewall and what is the security, right? Yeah, anyone having any question, guys? Uh, feel free to ask. Not, not hesitate. Any point of time, if you feel you having any question, just raise your hand or just unmute yourself and ask the question. I'll try to address. It's not just related to firewall. If you're having any question and you are struggling to just, you know, address those questions, I'll try to help. It's related to, might be a silly question like networking, CCNS, CCNP, checkpoint, other firewall, G scaler, SD WAN, wireless. So if you guys are having any question, just ask. Even you want to discuss some basic cloud, so uh, I can also help on that, all right? <clears throat> so let's start. So before we start, uh, I would like to brief something about the Palo Alto series. Okay, so there is three series available in the market. One is the you know the yellow color you can see, Strata PA series. That is for that they develop the firewall. That is the pure firewall where we can see the content ID, user ID, and device ID, and they also deal in terms of the virtual firewall, next generation firewall. So what currently we are going to do the configuration and all that all fall under this LO category, right? Strata PS reach. So Panorama is also part of this category, but if you move to advanced thing, like if you want to run the SASE, so SASE is like, it's the future. It's like the future, secure access service age. So like right now without SASE, your digital transformation of any organization is not going to be complete, okay? So if you want to use the SASE, if you want to use the SD-WAN solution, if you want to use the cloud native platform security, then probably you have to use the advanced level of the firewall that fall under the Prisma access, right? So you can see here, SASE, as I mentioned, so SASE is like one of the concept introduced by the you know Gartner magic. It's not a solution, it's a concept. And in this SASE, Secure Access Service Age, we having a multiple component. It's not only the firewall, it's include the firewall, secure web gateway, it's include the, you know, uh, your SD-WAN solution and other component like uh, your normal traditional uh, URL filtering, content filtering, data lake prevention. So everything is going to be like, uh, combined together and once we combine together that become a very advanced level of things and every organization is running behind this solution okay and different different vendor are offering different different solution like you can go with the g scaler one of the best solution i can say palo alto and g scaler they are leading the market so also having other vendor also trying to go with that you know all kind of requirement of the customer but still in the market g scaler nobody is like above than G scaler, just simply it's leading the market. Okay. So if you guys having any time you want to learn the SASE, or maybe we can discuss in some day during the, our courses. So I'll explain a bit more about the what is SASE. Once we about to finish about the courses, then we'll discuss about that. So I'll explain how the component are like play a vital role, like all component SD WAN, SD access, your firewalls, your uh, secure web gateway, and how they are all going to combine together and how they are going to solve your all your legacy or organizational level problem. So this is something if you want to understand that is going to come, come under the <clears throat> Prisma access and that known as the secure access service age. Might be many of you heard first time, so no need to worry. Just note this word and it is going to use a very you know, uh, frequent in your future. And here you can see, Firewall as a service, that is a next generation firewall. Secure web gateway, what I was talking, zero trust network access, that we call G, that sort form basically you find in the Google that we call G, T, and A. So this is like a, a word you find, and this is also part of SASE that called zero trust network access. Nobody going to be trust on the network. Whatever you have to play around the network, or security, you just have to prove you are the right person, you are the authentic person, and you want to access the network, then you have to fulfill all the credentials, 
all the criteria where you want to access or not. If you are allowed, then you access. If not allowed, you are going to be not access the network. So this all come together and become a SaaS aim. So just little uh, example. Now that is a Prisma cloud. They're having a lot of cloud security, portion management, cloud workplace protections, cloud network security. So all the cloud related security, if you want to deploy with the uh, Palo Alto, that you have to use the Prisma cloud security platform. And last but not least, that is a Prisma SD-WAN. That is a next generation SD-WAN firewall. This is going to be, you know, support. Okay. So if you're having the Pan OS 10, series of the pan over serial organization then probably you can use this for the sd van so earlier like uh, 9.0.0 uh, it was not introduced as sd van but when you're going to use the 10.0.0 then sd van feature is also available in this pan OS. so this is all all you can do that and the last green section that cortex xtr that's it's more about that you know monitoring deductions and response so like uh, how we can detect the things like uh, malware protections and analysis be up the you know how my network traffic is going on what kind of vulnerability report we have how the my uh, other like advanced malware protection uh filtering the packets is there any any kind of potential report we have for which we have to take an action so that all basically come in the cortex solutions it's more about the monitoring and just uh protect your network in the, you know, in terms of the wider report. So you can come to know what is happening in my network. So that solution is going to help you out. So we are not going to touch this one, not this one, but yes, this one fully we are going to touch, touch where we understand everything might, you're not aware about what is the application ID, user ID, content ID and device ID. So this all are in my slivers. So let me show you. So once we go step by step, uh where is my ppt i believe i not restarted recording okay let me just start i'm very lazy to start recording where i can start okay record okay so i just started my recording i just forget to record last session as well but no problem it is available on youtube so anyone can watch there so uh, where is my PPT? Yeah, this is my PPT already. Okay. So here you can see this content ID, user ID. These all are already in part of my syllabus. So if you guys want to understand, I definitely help you out to, you know, in terms of the, what is the user ID? What is the content ID? What is the application? In very detailed. We are not going to just discuss and understand it. Theoretical. No, we are, we will do the live real time practical thing. Okay. In a very deep type. So without any further delay, let's start objective of today's session that is the firewall live configuration so today what i have done i have a lab okay and that lab where i'm going to configure a very brand new firewall so in this lab what i'm going to do i'm just going to take the first lab my first hello to lab so this is the our first lab okay so here you can see nothing is there so first we will understand let's suppose you are an engineer and you are working for your customer and there is requirement you have to configure one of the brand new firewall okay so if you need to configure brand new firewall how you are going to configure right how to configure the firewall right this could be the first things you have to do or might be you are working in the SOC that is security operation center and you're one of the sites having the palo alto firewall that has been having an issue might be you have to do rma okay so if you have to do the RMA, then you have to replace the firewall, right? So if you have to replace the firewall, you should know what should be the process. How can I replace the firewall? What are the prerequisites before doing the replacement of the firewall? How can I take the console of the firewall? How can I take the GUI access of the firewall, right? So these all things I, I have seen because 
I'm also working professional. So I know these are the pain points of the every engineer who having not very clear vision how to work on the firewall or might be they are just trying to learn the firewall. So they're not having the clear concept. So we should be very clear about our role. If we are going to perform any kind of activity, our SOPs should be very handy and everything. what I'm going to do that should be very clear in my mind. If I am not clear, things is not going to work as expected. Might it lead to an escalations? Your managers, your senior manager will like uh, push you like, why it is going to take a longer time to do the firewall configuration might be the FE, which is available on the on-site that is a field engineer. They also going to like uh, tell you, Hey, why not you able to configure? Why not you are able, able to give me the right advice? So things is going to create problem for you. So that's why I'm just helping you here to just understand how to do firewall configuration in the very basic. So let's understand. So what is going to happen? So let's say, suppose you have to do the army of any firewall. So what required? You must require one of the firewall that could be the Palo Alto firewall. So that your might be your uh, team, any procurement team, or might be your other support team is going to order one of the firewall or might be customer has already ordered the firewall, which is going to ship on site, right? Once it is going to sit shipped on site, there will be one of the field engineer will be available. He is going to do the rack mounting. Okay. So that rack mounting is going to happen on the rack. Once the FE will do the first step rack mounting, they will connect the power supply. Okay. So power is very important. So they will connect the power supply. So your rack mounting is done, has been done. Your power supply has been done. Then probably this could be the vice versa. They will complete first cabling or then power supply, or you can do either way. It's up to field engineer what he like to do that. So many engineer have seen they do power supply first, then they do the cabling for many engineer do the first cabling, then do the power supply. So here, what is going to happen after let's assume they connected the power, then the cabling. So what is the cabling? What cabling have to do here? So if we having a firewall, so I explain that in your organization, you having one of the LAN infra, you having the WAN infra, right? So in LAN, basically you might be having the switch, right? You might having a switch and behind the switch end users might be connected. Your server might be connected and end user server, AP, EC, or might be any other kind of the printer would be connected behind the switch. So this is the LAN. LAN is a local network behind everything is connected. Now the placement of the firewall could be two place. It could be either between the LAN or WAN, or it could be just WAN. So you can place firewall here. And directly this firewall connect, connect the switch and this is going to the internet. So this could be the one solution. You might be connect this way or what we can do. You can connect one of the router and after that router, you connect the firewall. And this firewall is going to connect the switch and this router again, having the internet connection. So this could be the true solution. Either could be your internet router would be there. You, if you're having a lot of money, or might be you having uh, some kind of the very high ability infra, uh, ability infrastructures, then you can use this solution. But still, if you want to take a direct internet connection on this firewall, you can take it and you just connect this firewall to the switch because this firewall is very much capable. This can run the BGP, this can run the OSPF, this can run the your static route, this can run the RIP, not ESGRP, and also the multicast. So every routing they can support. I'll show you how it is going to happen in our upcoming sessions. So if you want to run BGP, you can run it with the ISP router. If you want to run the ISP, any other protocol, you, you want to run the LAN, you can do that. So there is no problem. So this solution you can use, you can opt, or either this solution you can use or you can opt.
so this is all about the solution now once you connect the once you do the rack mounting once you connect the power supply the cabling parts come you have to connect the firewall if you opting the first solution you have to connect the uplinks that is going toward the van your downlink that is going toward the lan so these all cabling field engineer engineer must have to do that so might be this ports could be your ethernet 0 by 1 and it could be the ethernet 0 by 2 so these are the port might be you are going to connect so these are the uplink and downlink but now the question is going to come let's your fe has done the physical steps now it's your turn this is your turn where you have to take remote access of the firewall right it is required without remote access how you can do the configuration of the firewall so you must required remote access of the firewall so what you have to do you can take a remote access via console or via the gui so that is the key things how the console is going to be happen so let me one of let me open one of the like diagram from the google and we'll see it together how the palo alto firewall look like right so you can see here <clears throat> let me open this firewall so probably we can see together <clears throat> So you guys see here. This is the one of the Palo Alto firewall. In this Palo Alto firewall, uh, let me just clear this screen. I hope you guys understand. Uh, let me just do one thing. This is not this one. Let me just take one of the snip before clearing this screen. So let I can use this. Okay. All right. Let me just clear this screen. So now here you can see that this is the firewall, right? And in this firewall, we having. Guys, please mute yourself. so here you can see uh, like uh, this is the palo alto firewall and in this palo alto firewall let me just use some different this palo alto firewall model is pa220 this is a very basic firewall i can say entry level of the firewall so every palo alto series just start with the pa220 this is a basic very basic firewall but if you going from basic to advanced level of the firewall your console your port things uh for the gui and cli is going to remain same because every firewall must having one of the console port you just have to use c type of connector if you have you can just connect it and one port you have to connect to your laptop and one is to this firewall and you can just take the console of the firewall if you don't have the c type cable if you want to take the console from the rj45 lan cable even you can do that so there is two console port you can see one is the rj45 and another is the c type right so either of cable can going to help you in terms of taking the console of the firewall so what is going to happen so basically you have to connect the cable so how it is going to be happen let me just draw some kind of the you know diagram so you guys can understand so let's suppose you having the rj45 cable so one port is going to connect here another port is going to connect on your laptop so let's say suppose this is your laptop and every laptop having a nic card and this cable is going to connect here right once you connect this laptop must have pt install this is a software or secure crt that that these are the software from where you can take a console so these are the, this connection is known as the serial connections so once you connect this laptop with this rj45 we are virtually here so i cannot show you how it is going to happen but i can give you the right feel how it is going to happen so you have to use your partition 
you can see here once you use your participation you have to change here as a serial and you just have to use the speed that is going to support 9600 and you just have to select the correct com port where your serial port is connected so once you connect the cable from the rj45 and with the serial cable and another with the firewall and once you select the correct things like uh, com port and speed and once you open you will get the cli access of the firewall right so this is how you can take the cli access of the firewall so let's say suppose you taken the you have taken the cli access of firewall then you further do whatever you want to do we'll see how it is going to happen after some time i'm going to show you so this is like something i cannot show you right now but this is how it is going to happen in the live environment now the second option let's say suppose we are talking about the next generation thing that is basically working on the gui that is known as a graphical user interface so if we talk about the gui graphical user interface then we have to do something similar likewise the console console always come in the cli that is a command line interface but if you want to take the gui that palo alto firewall support then you have to do some different arrangement your laptop is going to remain same but this connection is going to be changed so in a state of connecting this console port you just have to connect this management port let me just this management port to again this rj45 via the rj45 cable so this is the management port this is the you know rj45 nic card of the laptop and it is going to connect straight like whatever the rj45 cat6 cable we have and that we have to do once we have to do we have to configure one of the ip address on your laptop and what is that ip address let me tell you so whenever you purchase any hardware based firewall management interface always configured with one of the ip that is known as 192.168.1.1/24 or this is ip just configure you can use any subnet mask just forget about the subnet mask right so let's say suppose this ip always configured on the firewall whenever you purchase any physical firewall very important word guys physical firewall not talking about the virtual firewall vms not having any ip address it is hard coded ip address only available on the physical firewalls so whenever you just configuring any of the firewall with this vm environment you don't have any ip address but if you are buying any of the firewall that is the hardware based any model of the firewall it's a pa200 series or it's 7000 series it doesn't matter there would be one ip configure that is known as 192.168.1.1 so this is how your one ip is already available on the management interface so once this ip is available so what we have to do you have to configure your laptop ip address on the same range so might be you can go and you can configure your network adapter ip address that is 192.168.1.2 so this is how you can configure your uh, uh, another PC IP address. Okay. So now you can see my this IP is configured and this IP is already configured. So if you go in the command line of the computer and if you try to ping this IP address, it is going to be ping. So this PC can ping this. IP address. Once you're able to ping this one, you just have to go in the browser and just you have to write HTTPS. Let me just, you just have to write HTTPS at 192.168.1.1 from your PC. Okay. So you just have to go from your PC and after that, you'll get the GUI access of the file. So whatever the story I have told right now, I'm going to prove it. It is going to work or not. One is not going to happen. I told very specific thing. When you having the physical firewall, you having this IP address. But if you having the virtual firewall, this IP address will be not available. 
So you have to configure some IP address for the management interface. How it is going to happen? Let's understand. So let me just go in the lab and show you guys how it is going to happen. Whatever we understand in the theoretical purpose, right? So this is my EVNG. Nothing is configured. So what I required? I need two things. First, I need the firewall. The first thing I need a firewall. Why my pen is not working? Just give me one minute, guys. There is some problem. Just give me one second. Okay. Okay. So I need a firewall. That is a Palo Alto. Another, I need a PC. So because we are learning here, we don't have anything. We cannot arrange anything physically. So let's do virtually, right? So let me just go in the virtual environment. This is my EVNG platform. Here I can go and create the topology. So what I have to do, I have to go. Already everything is set. I created my first lab. I have to go in node and I will select my Palo Alto firewall. And I can select, I have three image already. So I can select 10, 0 0.4 or I can select 9, 0 0.4. It's a bit slow. We'll use later one, but it's very fast. So I'll use for timing this one. So at least it is going to save a lot of time. But in upcoming session, we might use this one also. Okay. So there is no problem. So here I'm going and I'm just going to use one of the firewall. That is a Palo Alto. Now this Palo Alto firewall, let's say suppose it's available in the virtual environment. So I have to take access either via the CLI or the GUI. So if I want to take the CLI, that, that, that means the console access. So I don't just have to click on this firewall, I'll get the access. If I start this firewall, I'll just click it because it is already linked in the backend with the serial connections. So I'll get the access. So let me just do thing. Uh, uh, let me just add one more firewall also. So we'll see how it is going to happen. So you guys can understand both thing in the same time. So in this firewall, I'm not doing anything. I'm just starting it, okay? But in this firewall, what I'm going to do, I'm also going to add one of the window PC. That is my virtual machine. And in this PC, I'm going to... Okay, guys, you tell me first, I have to take GUI of this Palo Alto firewall. So which port I need to connect from firewall to this system. There's a lot of ports. Like one is the console port. Just put me your, uh, like whatever you know in the chat box. If you're watching on the YouTube, if, if you want to put in the uh, Zoom live, you just put your answer in the chat so I can see, okay? So there is a, a console port. There is a uh, management port and other port type is ethernet port. Right. So which port it is going to be used to connect this PC to the firewall. So I can see very first answer I received from Sam. Yes, Sam, you are right. It's a management port. You are absolutely right. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you so much. Any, anyone having any doubt till now here? Just, just speak out guys. If you're having any question, I will try to help you out. So it's very simple because we cannot take a console. We are in the virtual. So we'll go with the management stuff. So management port need to be con connected here. So I, what I'll take, I'll connect the cable and I'll just drag down here and here I'll change the port type as a management. Okay. You can see you don't have any console, but we can select here. And this is going to connect on the PC NIC. That is a single port. So once it is going to done, if I want to change some style, some color, I can do it for the better look because I have pro. So I can use this and just change the color as well. Okay. So this is my management port and this is connected with my Palo Alto firewall. So now this is how connection has been done. Let me just restart these two things together and also already have started this one firewall. So this lab, what I'm talking here, it is going to access the GUI graphical user interface, and this is going to happen in the CLI. So because we don't have serial cable virtual environment, we cannot connect it. So what you have to do just simply, you have to click on this firewall. 
it is going to open in the CLI automatically. So this is the console of your firewall. See, this is the console of your firewall. Just have to put your credential admin and admin. Let me show you admin. So no need to worry. So one more thing, whenever you get the lab access. So once you start the firewall, just wait two to three minutes. Okay. You just have to wait two to three minutes. Sometimes it's take four to five minutes to just accept the credential of the firewall. So default username and password of the firewall is admin and admin. But after entering your first time firewall, you have to change your default username, uh, sorry, default password. Username remains same, but your password must have to change. So let me just see if this is accepting my credential now. So admin and admin it is not accepting still because my firewall is not ready so still we have to wait for few more minutes i believe let me see if it is ready still not let me open this firewall also So admin, it is giving incorrect because it's not fully started. It will definitely going to be take password, but it is just matter of time. So no need to worry. Initially, when you configure the firewall, just have to wait four to five minutes to just enter your credential. Sometime uh, I have the feedback people uh, like, uh, start saying, hey, hey, sir, hey, Pankaj, it's not working for me. Just we have, it's just also this is going to similar issue in the SD-WAN labs, Palo Alto labs. So just you have to wait for some time, then it is going to take. Okay, so let me see. Now it's taken, this, this firewall have taken the credential, you can see. So once, the firewall is ready. It's taken the admin admin credential. Now it's asking again, enter your old password. So now what I'll do, I'll enter again admin here. So admin. Now it is asking, you can see here, enter your new password. Okay. So I'll I'll go and use new password. Confirm your password. So I'll confirm. And once I'll done, you can see I have the firewall CLI access. You can see here. So if I run so system info, you can see this firewall doesn't have IP address pre-configured as a management IP address. This is unknown, you can see. But if you buy the physical firewall, this field should be filled with 192.168.1.1. So this is the console access. Basically, we have taken. Now we'll configure and take the GUI access as well, but just wait for uh, for some time, let me just see this firewall is ready. Let me see this PC is ready or not. Oh, so I believe there is some image issue in this PC uh, because today only I just built this in my server. So I will not having a valid image. So no worry, what I'll do, I have the backup plan also. So this is something I can go here. I can uh, first lab, I can create first lab i can create the similar topology no need to worry cli we have seen here it, it's definitely going to work window this is my pc this is the pc this is the palo alto where it is come on uh, all right this is the same version so only thing, this is the management and that's all. So let me just start it. Okay. So only the problem is this PC doesn't have the right image. So it is not getting a start. So PC must be a start. Then only we can take the, you know, GUI access. If this virtual PC is not going to start, then probably I'm not able to take the GUI access. Okay. Or what I can do, I have another way. Let me just see if that is going to work. Uh, I can connect to, 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 to where it is network. All right. And 
I can use the which icon I can use that can be cloud. I can use the management cloud, this one. I can connect, I can take access from my browser as well because I'm in the LAN right now. So this is my management. Let me see if it is going to work. So this is another way without PC. My, my PC is going to be act as a, no, like physical PC is going to just talk with this firewall virtually behind because we are doing the cloning and like Nick level of the mapping for the uh, virtual uh, interfaces. So that is going to also help. So just we have to wait either way, we'll check that. So let me see if this is starting. So you can see this PC is started because they're having the right image, valid image. So this is just started and firewall definitely it is going to take few minute time because So let's wait. <clears throat> so guys, we have to just wait because uh, unless or until this PC is not going to start, we'll not be able to perform. So this PC is started. So I have set up. Uh, let me just increase some skin resolutions. It's very small, not looks good. So what I'll do, I'll use this one. So this PC is going to become a bigger one. Keep changes. Yeah. They start later. So now I have a virtual PC that is ready. Okay. So we'll do and whatever we discuss about the GUI access of the firewall. So already PC is connected to the management interface, but this management doesn't having the IP address because, because we are talking in the virtual environment. So I'll show you. Okay. You can see this PC gate, the IP address is 192.168. It's also not popping. So we just have to wait guys, uh, we don't have choice. So let's see how much time it is going to take. A lot of window are open. Let me just close all window because I just want to use relevant one. So this is my firewall. Let me see if it is ready to use, still not. As you, if you're having any question, meanwhile, the firewall is getting ready. You always feel free to ask, okay? Always feel free to ask. Let me see.
so admin admin still this file will not ready so it is taking my longer time but definitely it will be ready so let me just log in again try it no not working let me see if i can able to log in 192.168.11 https yeah this firewall is ready you can see this firewall i'm able to access from my pc so you can see this i can access why i can access why it is i why it's get the ip address because the dscp is enabled on this firewall so let me let me show you hey someone uh, i don't know who is stopping the recording i don't know what happened why recording is getting us admin pankaj 12 pankaj 12 that i need to change the password again admin pankaj 12 okay so here basically we'll get the access let me see on this lab what is happening still not ready or it's ready let me see admin 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 not ready no problem at all so you can see i have taken the you know gui access of the firewall but how it's happened what is the logic behind this so this lab basically it is like i integrated the cloud where my you know home network like my lease line my isp private my private cloud has been you know uh, just clone here and everything is that they are going to get the ip from the dscp server so this is how the things has been done for this one but if i go and take the access of the firewall via the partition so what i have to do i have to enter here 192 168 1.11 and probably i'll get the access yeah you can see here and i just have to put the username and password so this is my the firewall access so this time this interface by default there should be no ip address but it is get, it it received the ip address from the dscp so that's why you can see there is some ip address but it is received from the dscp you can see here the assignment type is dscp so when you process the firewall might be that is the vm environment or you want to do the lab you probably not having the ip address or might be you don't have a network who is going to provide the dscp what luxury i have right now my network given the ip from the dsv but your your time it is not going to happen so you have to assign the manual ip address on your firewall that i want to show you but still this firewall is not ready so yeah it is ready now so how it is going to happen let me show you so let's say you are the engineer and you have to configure the firewall so now here let me show you show system this is the command very important command if you want to check the info you can see this firewall doesn't have any ip address you can see no ip address at all so this is the situation and you have to assign the ip address to this firewall and then you have to take the gui access so what you have to do first you have seen that this is the firewall which doesn't having the ip address but the ip assignment type is given as a dscp so the very first thing we have to change from dscp to static because in your network dscp server is not you know present in my case it was present but in your case it is not going to happen so the first thing you have to change the ip assignment from dscp to static so how it is going to happen so just first you have to go in the configuration mode and after going to configure configuration mode, uh, mode you have to write a command state device system type here you have to enter the static not dscp so 
if you are not changing the static and you are trying to give the ip address it is not going to take so this is the first command you have to run so once you run you might do the commit to just checking purpose whether my changes has been done or not so you can see this commit is not taking because whenever you just start any of the firewall there is auto commit process is going on so that's why auto commit is not going to allow to do any commit thing unless or until it is going to be complete right so you can see this is auto commit is going up going to uh, going on on this firewall so it is not going to be commit so there is another thing to commit let me just do that uh, commit force and let me just enter so it is going to forcefully commit the commit that things that is also going to execute this thing so probably we have to wait meanwhile i'm going here let me see uh, what is happening in this firewall so if i'm going here i just want to see in the task so you can see there is auto commit already completed okay so in this case if auto commit is completed if i want to make any changes i can do that but in this firewall auto commit is still in progress so i cannot do any changes so let me just go in this firewall and let me run the same thing because auto commit has been done so i can go in the configuration here again and i'll just write the command set device config system type static so earlier you guys see that this was the dscp so i'm changing the static then i'll change some another ip address might be dot one so here what i'll do i'll go and i'll just make the static and if i do the commit you can see the commit is started meanwhile let me see what is happening here it's still not done so we'll keep watching both of the window what is going on so now you can see <clears throat> it is completed 99% So this commit is 99%, 100% uh, completed. So now if I'm going again and run the command, show system info, you can see this statement has been changed static. Now I can change the IP address, any IP address, whatever I want. So let me just go again in the configuration and I, I will change the IP address. So set device configuration system IP, you can see. IP address, and here I can just put the IP address 192, 168, might be 1.99. This is my IP address, okay? And uh, Netmask, I can use here Netmask, and this could be the 255, 255, 255.0. And I can use the uh, default gateway, might be 192, 168, 1.1. So this is how I have done the my IP configuration change it is going to change this ip address 11 to 99 okay so uh, before you, you have done the configuration but still it is not applied so for apply you just have to do the commit here okay so you just have to do the commit so it's commit is going on let me see what is happening here so still it is doing the commit stuff it's quite slow because it's hosted in uh, somewhere low resource capacity that's why it's working very slow but this is very fast. So almost done. So basically it's done, but why we lost the access? Because we were logging with the wrong IP address. So let me just try to log in it again with a new IP address because my IP has been changed, 11 to 99. So let me take the new session. So that's why it's stopped because session has been lost. So this is my new IP address and probably you can see I'm able to take access. So if I am login here, admin and uh, my password, what I have said, probably I'll be able to log in. So 
So what is asking us what is wrong? Why? Okay. So again, it is asking to change the password because uh, the IPv chain. So you just refresh the systems. So let me enter the old password. Let me enter the new password. And now it's done. So now I have done. And if I go and refresh this page, this is not going to work because the IP has been changed of the firewall. So what I have to do. <clears throat> so this also completed. You can see this also completed. So let me show you this also. But let me just first finish this part. So this I'm going to show. So system info. And you can see now this is the IP address. This is the net mask and this is the default gateway. And this, this is the static, what I have done. And once I'll go and try to open the new IP address from here, it is going to work for me because my IP has been changed from 11 to 99. So here you can see guys, I have taken the GUI axis of the firewall via the 99. So this is the one step I have done from my PC to that firewall. But still, uh, we are going to complete this one because this is the more realistic and this is how you have to do. So might be some people having the less understanding what I have done in this cloud environment, but you can always go and check the your what is the IP address assigned to your device. So you can go on the management. You can just click interface and you can see this is the type of assignment is static and this is the net mask. This is the default given. This is the IP address. So whatever you have done the changes in the CLI, it reflect here in the GUI as well, right? So let, let me back here. So this configuration has been also done. So let me just show you what is uh, showing here. Show system info. So now you can see this one having the static IP assignment. You guys see static IP assignment, but not now still my job is not completed. So after this, I have to go and set the IP address for this firewall for the management interface. So that is going to happen by this command set device config system IP address. And that I'm going to give 192.168.1.1. That is like hard coded you get in the real firewall. And you can give the net mask is like 255, 255, and 255, and zero. No default gateway required because we're just going to take the locally. GUI access of this firewall, uh, sorry, this firewall from this PC. So no gateway would be required. So just we have to wait for the commit. Once commit is going to done, then my this firewall management interface configuration will be completed. And then we'll go on the PC and we'll see what additional configuration we required on the PC. And once we configure the PC configuration, then probably we will have the GUI access of the firewall. All right. So let's do it. Next step, guys. So after going here, let me just show you what is happening. So system info, you can see here, now it is this IP address going 192.168 and this is the static. Now I'm going on the PC. So this is my PC. So what first thing you guys have to check? I told you in the very beginning, this RJ45 cable is going to connect to this PC. And on this NIC card, also you have to give the similar series of the IP address, then it is going to communicate. So how can I verify what is my PC IP address? So I'll go there and I'll go in the CMD. And after going in the CMD, I'll just try to run the command IP config. You can see this is getting a PIP IP address. You can see 169 is the IP IP address. So this is not a valid IP address. We you cannot you know talk to this to this firewall. So if I going to ping it, it is not going to ping. Let me show you guys. So 192, 168, and this IP we configured on the management interface of the firewall. So see, it is not pinging. This is a transist failed, transmit failed general failure because we don't have the valid source IP address. So always you have to remember source IP address from where your packet originating and what is the destination IP address to which you are trying to reach source and destination always contain one of the IPv4 packet. So how we can configure the IP address on this PC NIC card? So it's very easy. You just have to go the 
here it LAN is not showing, no problem. So I can go here in control panel and you can go in the internet and network sharing center. And you can click on the change adapter setting. Here is the local network. You just go in the property and click it. And now you can click in the IPv4. So this is trying to take IP address automatically. So that is something not possible because it doesn't have any DSCP server configure here in this environment. So what we'll do, we'll use the static configuration. And once we use the static configuration, I'll give the hard coded IP address that is 192.168.1.2, uh, sorry, 2. And the net mask, I'll give this 255.255.0. Gateway, you can give the firewall IP address if you want. If, if you don't give, when it is going to work because it is going to stay in the same broadcast domain. I'm sure you guys are aware what is a broadcast domain. So no need to no DNS required because for time being, we know internet, we are access required here. So now you can see this is the configuration I have done. So now it's okay. So you can see there is some kind of the pop-up for the internet connection. So let me just see here and check the IP address. You can see it is already start pinging. <laughs> So you can see this is the IP address 192.168.1.2 and the firewall management interface, you guys already aware, we done the configuration, this IP address that one. So we try to ping, the first ping should work, then only we can do anything. So 191.1, then you can see it is working and it is pinging. So now we are in the good step. So what next we have to do? We just have to go in the browser. That is the last step to take the GYX of the firewall. So let me just put somewhere here and this, let me just go here and here I'll go in the browser. You can open any of the browser, Mozilla, Firefox, Edge, Chrome, whatever you have. So you just have to go and type the HTTPS because you are in the PC and then run 192.168.1.1 and now it's done. So probably this is going to give a pop-up window to this firewall. So let's wait. You can see here, it is saying this connection is not secure. Why? Because you don't have the valid certificate. HTTPS required the certificate. That is a very secure. So we don't have any valid certificate for this firewall. That's why we are getting the error but still we are good, no need to worry, okay? But always use HTTPS only when you try to access the firewall. HTTP is not going to work. It's always work on the 443. You can change it, but I'll show you how even you want to change, you can change it even the HTTP, but at the later stage. But for initial, you just have to use the HTTPS. Now you have just have to click on the advanced and proceed with unsafe because we don't have the valid certificate, SSL certificate, secure socket clear, right? That is work on the, Transport layer security, that is a layer four. So we'll have the dedicated topic for that. We'll cover that, no need to worry. So I'll proceed with unsafe. Then your beautiful like login window is going to arrive and you just have to enter your credential that is admin and then your password, whatever you have set. So you can set here and then you can click here and then it is going to... Mm. Okay, so sometimes GUI also need to change the password. So we just have to use the default password and then it is going to ask to change the password. So sometimes if not taking the password after entering the CLI, just use the admin and admin, it is going to redirect you to change again password from the GUI, then it is going to take. So that is something happening with me here. So just wait for some time, the window will arrive. Then we'll see. Guys, any question anyone having till now? Please feel free to ask. I can see a lot of people are very like quiet here. <laughs> I can say one of the quietest batch for me else people keep asking the question from beginning. So no worry, you guys can ask the question anytime. If you're having any, any doubt, you guys are not able to understand anything. So, So let me see.
so my password has been changed. Uh, what is the issue? Okay, let me check. Oh, oh. Okay, now it's done. So let me just log in it. So I can see uh, people are asking about the, how can contact you? So no need to worry you guys, you'll get that description, uh, everything, how to con contact us. And for any kind of the commercial thing, you can just talk to team. They will definitely help you out. No need to worry about that. So that is going to be, uh, like uh, deal with team, they will definitely reach out to you all and help you out for everything. So probably we can see now, finally we have the GUI access of the firewall and if we can see the dashboard of the firewall. <laughs> and in this dashboard, you guys can see, we having a device model, we having the management IP address, which I configured subnet mask, and the other field like serial number is unknown because we don't have licensed firewall, CPU ID, UI ID, VM model, where it, is, where it is installed and the software version and all, right? So this is like basic thing, what we covered today and we understand. Now we have to go very long way to understand and do the deep dive about each and everything about the firewall. What is the ACC application command center? Why it is going to be used? What is the monitor tab? What are the different different uh, flavors we have to do the monitoring and check the traffic logs like URL filtering, data filtering, IP tag, threads, live traffic. We can see a lot of options we have. So we'll cover and in the policy, we'll discuss how the NAT policy, security policy, policy with forwarding, DOS, DOS protection. So a lot of things we'll understand in the policy object. We have to do a lot of object stuff like the content ID, antivirus, anti-spyware, file blocking, everything we'll do in the lab. So no need to worry. So this is like our uh, day one class, we can say, where we understand about the Palo Alto firewall configuration, how to do the initial stuff. But from next batch onward, basically we not come in the live and probably we can, you know, uh, just have the uh, Zoom session where people can, just uh, have one-to-one -one discussion about their doubts, about your queries, go, go in the very detail, each and every things. And uh, let's see how it is going to be happen, okay? So we'll understand device, network, and everything, whatever having in the slavers. So you guys can uh, you know reach out for any query if you have to support team, they'll definitely help you out. All right, guys, so any question till now? Any question, any suggestion, any feedback, you guys not understand anything? Just ask me, okay, before I can close this meeting. So I can see there is a silence. So I'm just taking as a no. All right. So thank you so much, guys, for you know joining the session for today. We'll see you again in the next class. Okay. Bye bye. Take care. Have a great day.